So around this time when an audition season is now over and there are no more teams to audition for, there are a lot of mixed emotions. So we have lovelies that are beyond excited because they did make the team of their dreams. They're on cloud nine. And then we have other lovelies that maybe just didn't get as far in the audition process as they would have hoped. And so they are just begging for answers, trying to figure out what went wrong and what happened. And they'll ask a lot of different questions, but many of the questions have this one common theme. And that theme is, when is enough enough? Now that's a really hard question to answer, but I'm gonna give it a try. So when is enough enough? Now I can really go into two different directions in answering this question. So in this video, I'm gonna address one direction and then in the video next week, please be sure to tune in, I will go ahead and address the other direction. So basically, when is enough enough? Such a hard question to answer, but I'm going to try my hardest to give you the best response that I can. So here are the questions, um, some of the questions that I've received that kind of go into this whole theme. So number one, do you think they're sick of me? Maybe they are tired of seeing me. Should I try out for another team? Maybe I should just give up. When is it time to move on? So I'm going to try to kind of give an abbreviated response to each of these. Now, of course, I've already emailed my lovelies or spoken to my lovelies and addressed these individually with them, but I thought that it was worth sharing the responses with you. So do you think they're sick of me? So first of all, most teams are very happy when you come back year after year after year. It shows your dedication, it shows your commitment. The more ladies and the more candidates, the more men that show up to these auditions, the better. They want to see many candidates. The more of a pool that they have to select from, the better their team will be. Now, here's the exception to that. They could get sick of seeing you if they are not seeing improvement. They could get sick of seeing you if they are not seeing that you're working on your craft. They could get sick of seeing you if you have stayed at the same level or have maybe taken a few steps in the wrong direction. So you really wanna make sure that if you are auditioning for a particular team year after year after year, that you are stepping up your game in every way, every single year, and then that way they won't be sick of seeing you, right? All right, the next question. Maybe they are tired of seeing me, so it pretty much goes back to the response that I just gave you. Should I try out for other teams? So I'm a firm believer that you should never put all of your eggs in one basket, and that's with anything in life. I do know that many of our lovelies have that one dream team, but that doesn't mean that there aren't other teams out there that could satisfy you just as much that you would be happy dancing for. That also doesn't mean that if once you start doing your research, you could find another dream team. So yes, most definitely, I think that you should audition for multiple teams every single audition season. One, it's to help you become better at auditions and two you're not going to put all of your bag eggs in that one basket and then therefore be extremely disappointed if you don't get the outcome that you want it also means that you're not going to waste an entire year for that one audition so please by all means do your research and look at other teams and find other teams that you might be a good fit for another thing to keep in mind is that maybe your number one team is a pro team well, you don't, if you don't make that team, then why not audition for some semi-pro teams during that year to enhance your skills, your performance, and get that experience that you need. So most definitely try to audition for multiple teams, but of course, be open and honest about that as well. Don't make the directors or the coach think that you're only going to attend their audition because they may see you on social media, pictures and videos um, at the other team's audition. So just be mindful of that. Number three. Maybe I should just give up. I don't even think that I have to answer this one, do I? <laughs> you know that I'm gonna tell you that you should not give up. That should not even be an option. Obviously, after you receive that no, yes, you're gonna be down. You're not going to feel like maybe even getting out of bed the next day. 
but you have to push through that. And it's very normal to be disappointed. However, if you give 110% at that audition and you know that you laid it all out on the floor and there wasn't anything that you could have done better, then you should leave that audition feeling amazing even if your number is not called. So hopefully you're able to kind of just brush it off, learn from the experience and keep pushing forward. Remember, and I always say this, every no gets you closer to your yes. And success does not happen without failures along the way. So you just have to keep in mind that you have to learn from, you know, maybe that no, learn from that audition and just, you know, make sure that you show up bigger and better the next time. So most definitely you need to keep moving on. You should not give up. The last one, when it comes, when is it time to move on? So I kind of just <laughs> hopefully answered that question along the way. I really cannot tell you when it's time for you to move on. You could definitely, you know, reach out to the coaches, their directors and get feedback from them. I always recommend doing that. But I think at the end of the day, only you can answer that question for you. So when is it time for you to move on? When you've lost the love and the desire to go pro when you've lost the love and the desire to reach this dream and to reach this goal, when you've lost the fire for auditions and the audition process, when you've lost the fire for learning and growing as a dancer and improving your craft, when you've lost the fire in your confidence and in your performance and in your attitude, then maybe that's a sign that it is time to move on and to maybe find another goal or another dream to chase after. So really that is only an answer that you can give yourself because I don't know if you've lost that fire. I don't know if you've lost that love and that desire to keep pushing on. But I do know this, if you wake up the next day or five days or a month or two months from the time that you hear that no and you're still thinking about going pro, then that means that you have not lost the love and desire for it. And that means that you should keep pushing on. If it's something that you cannot get out of your head, then that means that you need to keep moving forward. So hopefully that helps. Now I do want to share a couple of stories with you really quick <laughs> and I'll try to make these fast to just kind of underscore the importance that you can never just give up after hearing no once or hearing no twice or even hearing no three times, five times, ten times. So Brianne, one of our lovelies, um, auditioned multiple times for the Washington Redskins cheerleaders. I think she ended up finally making it as an ambassador on her third or fourth attempt. When it came to audition number six, she was done. She was spent. She was ready to be finished. And I basically had to talk her into auditioning one more time. And I said to her, listen, do this for me. Even if you can't find it in yourself to do it for yourself, do it for me. Try it one more time. And if for some reason it doesn't happen for you, then I will completely support you moving on. Do you know that her sixth attempt at being a Washington Redskins cheerleader paid off and she made the team and she went on to be a captain. The next lovely, Tanisha. It took her 10 years to make the team of her dreams, her number one choice. And this doesn't mean that she didn't make teams along the way because she most definitely did. She ended up auditioning for multiple um, pro and semi-pro teams along the way, but it took her quite some time to make her number one team. And she was one of the first lovelies that we ever worked with when we first started Sideline Prep. So I absolutely love her, love her, love her. The next little case study that I wanna share with you is Erica. So Erica is another young lady that tried and tried and tried. Um, after her fifth attempt at auditioning for the Tennessee Titans, um, she joined our Pro Cheer Playbook program and ended up taking my advice and coming here to the DC area. She got accepted into the training program for the Redskins cheerleaders. She made it on the Baltimore Blast um, MASL soccer dance team and had just an amazing year, learned so much about herself as a performer. And then on her sixth attempt at the Tennessee Titans cheerleaders, she made the team. So it's all about putting in the work. It's all about not giving up. It's all about not giving up on yourself and just pushing forward. So hopefully those stories of those three amazing women will help you remember that a no only gets you closer to your yes, but that's only going to happen if you keep pushing forward. All right, that is all for now. I hope that that was helpful. If so, please give us a thumbs up and be sure to, you know, share. 
<laughs> with your friends we would love that and stay tuned for next week because I'm gonna actually go through a part two of this question and answer it in another way as well in the meantime be sure to follow us on all of our social media outlets and we are always here for you I will see you next week make it a great day